Well, hi there, thanks so for tuning into my YouTube channel, Jose Quinones, the CNC dude, reporting once again about a, pro about a problem that I had, a bug, a bug bugging me, but not the stomach bug. I'm super lucky that I haven't had one of those in a long time. Uh, no, in this case, the machine, uh, my CNC machine had a bug. She was sick. Uh, and I'm super happy to report that I was able to become the CNC medic, and although it took me a while to fix her up and bring her back into operation, she's doing very well now after uh, resting for a little bit. Um, so this bug is pretty annoying. It took me a while to figure out what the hell was going on. But let me show you what happened and how I was able to fix it. So perhaps you can avoid uh, going through this. Well, here are my hearts and they all came out pretty good. I asked my wife if she wanted to, uh, for me to make two of these into earrings and she told me that that would, have been, that would be a little bit dangerous for her earlobes as these are too heavy. Um, but anyway, you know, as pretty as these uh, hearts look, it was a nightmare to get here. <laughs> Man, one of, the, uh, one of the things, it took me like an entire day to figure this one out. But it truly rendered my CNC useless. For, uh, for a day and all of the junk that I generated was pretty annoying. So let me show you what happened here as I was trying to make these hearts. Here is my first attempt at making this heart, okay? And you're, I mean, obviously you'll see that there is something that resembles a heart and perhaps you're wondering why is this guy bickering about? Well, let me tell you why I am freaking bickering about this. This is the end meal that I use to carve my hearts or, uh, I just say to uh, groove out the heart out of this piece of aluminum. This is a quarter inch, two flute, high speed steel uh, mill, end mill, okay? Now, I'm not certain if you can easily see that the, there is like a freaking Grand Canyon in between here. So I'm supposed to just carve this through the heart shape, but what the hell is going on here? Why is this so thick? Did I confuse the meal and I was using the wrong one? No, I wasn't using the wrong one. I was using this bastard here and it was making all these preposterous tool pads in pretty much the wrong way. So it took me a while to realize that I was basically missing steps, okay? You can see them here, you can see steps, okay? So that means that whenever I repeated the job, the thing was going through a different set of coordinates than it should have. I had never seen this before. So I'm starting to think, my God, something is wrong with my CNC machine. Uh, you know, if there was a closed loop here, I would, th I would think that perhaps uh, the chaff encoder is uh, messed up, but these are steppers, so steppers, are operating open loop. There should be no problem uh, with uh, encoders because there are no encoders. So why am I losing steps? And first of all, am I even losing steps? Um, one of the reasons why it took me a while to figure this one out was uh, that another variable into the system was that I was trying, the that bias that you saw on a different video a few weeks ago, uh, my new CNC bias uh, from Tormac. And because this is a different method for grappling into the table, I thought that perhaps this thing was moving around, right? Uh, but man, I checked and this thing was solid. My house was gonna move before this piece of, of metal was gonna move from, with regards to the machine. So that wasn't it. Uh, one thing that I noticed, however, was that somewhere in here, there is like a clunk, like as, as the mill was going here, there is a jump and you can actually hear like, Brook! and. So I thought that, you know, this, this shape may not be, uh, may have some kind of a feature that the G-code cannot represent well and it was jumping here. All right, to validate my theory, what I did was that I used my, uh, my center drill and I drilled a hole at the coordinate, coordinate X3 minus 3Y. So that was the first hole. I rerun the job. And then I went back to the coordinate and sure enough, three minus three was no longer where it was at the beginning, okay? So you can see two holes in there, that's how much steps I had lost. And also you can see uh, steps in the, uh, in the different path, which means that uh, they, didn't, they didn't go from top to bottom on the same set of X and Y coordinates as it should have been. <clears throat> 
okay, now I am getting mega peace. I'm getting beyond mega peace. I am definitely losing steps, which I had never seen in my life before. There are no chaff encoders, so there should be no component uh, being messed up. Uh, my bias is super attached. What the hell could be going wrong? Had I not applied enough oil to the waist, so I, I that did a little, a little bit, I added more oil to the waist, and uh, just to make sure, and you know, but I kept on thinking the problem was with the jump in here, okay? I'm thinking because this shape is so weird and I have had some issues with it in Inventor, somewhere in here I'm losing steps. Well, if that's the case, I should be able to run a different shape and prove that this shape is the wrong one. Enter my experimental shapes and uh, I did the, basically the same thing. Um, I did a, a hole on the center on what would have been 1.5 minus 1.5, the coordinates uh, for X and Y. I did my square, I think it went into the hexagon, circle and triangle, and then I, <laughs> you know, there is no need to recheck these coordinates because when I did the second part of the square, it's pretty obvious that this thing is like way lost, but way, way lost. So what the hell is going on here? How is it that I am losing steps all of a sudden when it had never happened to me before in three years? There is no problem with the bias, there is no problem with the oil, there is no problem with the shapes. What could be going on? Well, I'm ashamed to admit that the problem is so simple that it eluded me for a few hours. What I came to think was uh, that perhaps the computer was not working as it should. We all know that Mac 3, um, it's a, a pretty real-time intensive piece of software, which means that if, if you're running something else in the background and that other application robs Mac 3 of precious time, you're gonna get missteps. So I started to think that the problem was with the computer, but there was nothing running in the background. So, but here is what uh, I came to think. You know, for the most part, when I use my Tormac CNC milling machine, I do this maybe uh, most likely in the weekends, which means that when I'm done with the machine, I turn my computer off and then I go back the next weekend or maybe two or three weekends into the future and then I recycle the computer, uh, I mean, basically in, uh, turn the computer on again. <clears throat> now, because I've been doing so much uh, in the past few weeks to record these videos and I'm having a lot of fun with this CNC machine, I thought of leaving the computer on. Ah, big mistake. That was my modernicity right there. Somehow, something got into the system. I don't know, you know, Windows just start messing up with the memory and it just start uh, cropping it, it all up. And that's what happened. So the computer was not running as fast as it would have been running if I had recycled power and you know restarted the operating system and all it had to all I had to do hours after I made all of these mistakes all I had to do was to restart the computer and voila perfect operation once again look at those cuts gorgeous no steps no missteps everything came back to normal and I have to say that is freaking embarrassing because I have been using Windows for well over 20 years and I know how crappy Windows can be. And it's not, I mean, it's not Windows fault, it's just, just how it is, right? I bet all, every operating system has flaws of this nature. <clears throat> but I know that if you don't restart Windows uh, regularly, things just doesn't behave as good. With a CNC machine, however, the results are pretty catastrophic. So it's not just that you're browsing a little bit slower or that perhaps um, you're uh, scrolling on the Windows Explorer is taking a little bit longer. Uh, it's pretty much the death of your CNC machine and its ability to follow toolpath. So lesson learned big time. If you are going to use a CNC machine that uses Windows and Mac 3, be certain to recycle power on the machine and restart the operating system. 
do not assume that the computer is working fine just because it looks like it's working fine. That would be the difference between <coughs> complete junk and smashing success. And they're pretty much just two modes. It's either junk or smashing success. So lesson learned for me. Hopefully you don't make that mistake again. Completely embarrassing for me because like I said, I have been using uh, Windows for 20 years. Man, I should have known better than to just let my computer on for all this long. But anyway, that's uh, my lesson, my CNC lesson for the day. There is not a lot of machining, but it's pretty still errors that you can make and mess up your work. Uh, so good information to have. Thank you for tuning and I'll see you on the next one.